Good morning, everyone. I thought I will start today's talk by asking this question from those of you who are parents. Don't you sometimes wish that your kids had come with an instruction manual? I know that I do. I think you will agree with me that parenting is one of the most complicated jobs ever. And most of us do not get any prior training for this all important job. It's a sink or swim kind of on the job training for many of us. Therefore, I thought today that I will share with you a few tips on effective parenting that I have picked up over the years working as a child psychologist, as well as my own experiences of parenting two very cheeky kids. First of all, I would like to ask you, what is your goal when dealing with your children? To instill fear, to show them who's the boss, or to help your child develop into a decent, kind and confident adult. Every human being needs to know that they are loved, valued, safe and capable. Children look to their parents and want to know if they love them and believe in them and if they measure up. Therefore, we parents have to show our children that we love them unconditionally and that we respect and value them. So don't be shy to tell your children that you love them and let them know how important they are to you. As Lawrence Steinberg, a parenting expert says, you can't spoil a child with too much love. What we often think of as the result of spoiling a child is never really the result of showing a child too much love. It is usually the consequence of giving a child things in place of love. Things like leniency, lowered expectations or material possessions. Now giving unconditional love does not mean that children can get away with anything. It is important to set limits and to teach your children that there are consequences to their actions. Children need to learn the cause and effect of their behaviors and consequences can be an effective teaching tool to help them identify desirable and undesirable behavior. I don't really like using the words good and bad behavior. So consequences can be either positive or negative. Positive consequences reinforce behavior and make it more likely to happen again in future. For example, you praise your child for sitting and eating their meal at the table and this positive consequence makes this behavior more likely in the future. Positive consequences can be praise, positive attention and little rewards for desirable behavior. Negative consequences on the other hand make behavior less likely in the future. Let's take for example that your teenager refuses to complete their homework so you take their phone away for the rest of the day. Both positive and negative consequences can be used to guide your child's behavior. But for consequences to be effective, they have to be consistent. If you take away your child's video game only two out of three times he or she hits a sibling, then you aren't being consistent. Your rules should, should not be unpredictable. They can't change, you know, from day to day. And consequences should also be time sensitive. Telling your teenager, you will get your phone back when I trust you again, is vague. It's always good to tell your children how long the consequence is in effect. 24 hours is usually a good amount of time to take something away from kids. Another important parenting practice is to give your children choices. Think about it. Children have very little control over their life and they will try to exert what little power they have by refusing to eat or go to bed when you tell them to. Giving your children choices doesn't mean that you allow them to run the show, but it means helping them make better decisions. For example, if your child is refusing to turn the TV off and come to dinner, you can say, you have two choices. You can turn the TV off and come for dinner 
or you can choose to not listen to me and go to bed early. As a working mother, one of the things I worry about is whether I'm spending enough time with my children. This is quite a common uh, thing among working parents, you know, to feel guilty about not spending enough time with their children. But what I have learned over the years is that it is not the quantity that counts, but the quality of the time you spend with your children. Make sure you give lots of positive attention to your child during the time you spend together and that you listen attentively and are responsive to your children's needs and cues when you are with your children. You can do fun activities that you both enjoy together, like reading a favorite story, going for a walk, just kicking a football around the garden, or you know, do an easy break baking project together. The important point here is that this particular time is spent exclusively with your child where you give them undivided attention without being distracted by your mobile or other such devices. Play with your child, laugh and be silly. It is also important to be an involved parent. Being involved means being there physically and mentally for your child. And it often entails rearranging work and other priorities. But being an involved parent does not mean being a helicopter parent who hovers over their child. Engaged parenting has many benefits for a child, such as feelings of love and acceptance, better self-confidence in your child and opportunities to grow. However, too much involvement in your child's lives like micromanaging their lives, overprotecting them, and trying to remove all obstacles from their lives is a hindrance to their growth. Like checking if your child has completed his or her homework is fine, but correcting each and every mistake or doing the child's homework yourself is not. Having obstacles to overcome is what helps children to build resilience to develop coping skills to deal with things that are difficult. If the parent is always there to clean up a child's mess or prevent the problem in the first place, how does the child ever learn to cope with loss, disappointment or failure? Do you want your child to always rely on you to fix things? Or do you want them to develop life skills? Therefore, if your children are old enough to do something for themselves, let them. It could be something small, you know, as you know, something small as tying their shoelaces, folding and putting away their clothes, or cleaning their room. If your child has a disagreement with a friend, don't try to get in the middle and solve it. Teach them the skills to resolve conflicts on their own. Let children make age appropriate decisions for themselves, like allowing a middle school age child to choose their preferred extracurricular activities or hobbies and to let all the children choose what classes to take and allow your children to fail. I know this is very hard, but not making a sports team or not being selected for the school play teaches children to cope with their disappointment. It is important to teach your children positive ways of coping with setbacks and disappointments rather than trying to prevent them from experiencing any heartache. So there you have it, some key ingredients of effective parenting. Love and care, consequences, choices, quality time, and balanced involvement in your children's lives. And the final point I want to make is that while parenting is very rewarding and enjoyable, it is also complicated and challenging. There are many different parenting styles and parents need to pick an approach that feels right for them and their children. Healthy parenting choices can vary according to the child and the situation. So let us not judge other parents for their choices and let us focus on being the very parents we can be to ensure the healthy mental and physical growth of our own children. No parent is perfect. I would definitely like to add the disclaimer that neither I no, my children are poster children for effective parenting. We all have our bad days. But in the end, if you have a good relationship with your child, 
and are really in tune with him or her. That is what really matters. I would like to conclude my little talk today by thanking the Hillwood College Past Pupils Association for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts and experiences with you. If you have any queries about what I talked about, you're most welcome to contact me. Thank you.